I know for a fact that this 2019 rules package, aero package that NASCAR has created for this year, they worked months and months on it. It wasn't something that was just created overnight. Yeah, they looked at the data from the Xfinity Series races at Indy, at Pocono and Michigan, obviously the cup race, at the all-star race at Charlotte last May. And they also talked to a lot of people within the industry. They talked to drivers, they talked to engine builders, engineers, manufacturers, team owners, and they took all this information and all this feedback. And that's how we've ended up where we're at in 2019. But we're only two races into this package. And I guess what kind of gets under my skin is sometimes people make a judgment about something even before it happens. They don't even give it a chance. And realistically, I think those people, I don't know that you'll ever change some of their minds. And these people would include some drivers, some members of the media, and unfortunately, some of the fans. Yeah, we've run two races, and I do like the direction that we're going. Let's go back to the race at Atlanta a few days ago. We had nobody that just absolutely dominated that race, and it was very unpredictable. We had a lot of comers and goers, and we had a lot of changing of the guard. And Martin Trex Jr., he was running the leader down, Brad Keselowski, in the closing laps. And you really didn't know what was going to happen until the checkered flag waved. And they say you can't pass with this package. Well, let me give you a little Larry McNugget. Kyle Busch had an issue at Atlanta. He had an issue at Las Vegas. He had that speeding penalty. In those two races, Kyle Busch alone, the 18 car, has passed over 100 cars. That sounds like to me you can pass. Let's look at the Las Vegas last year. Kevin Harvick in the four team sat on the outside the front row. One stage one, one stage two, led 214 laps. You didn't have to watch that whole race to know what was gonna happen. The only team that could beat Kevin Harvick was if Kevin Harvick beat Kevin Harvick. He dominated that race. There were four cautions and there were only nine drivers that finished on the lead lap. Let's look at this last Las Vegas race just this past weekend. I know we only had the two cautions for the stage ends and totally be honest, I didn't see that coming. I thought we'd have a lot of cautions. But with the only two cautions, no one dominated that race. We had over half the field finish on the lead lap and it was unpredictable. You really did not know what was gonna happen until the checkered flag waved on that race. Brad Keselowski was running his teammate down at the end of that race. So that's the thing I like. It's not that it's take taken the, the weak and made them stronger, or the strong and made them weak, but I think it's closed the gap. I see it in the practice, I see it in qualifying, and I see it in the race. I see it giving drivers like Daniel Hemrick, a rookie with Richard Childress Racing, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the two drivers from JTD Daughtery Racing, Ryan Priest and Chris Busher. It's made them more competitive, an opportunity to stay on the lead lap and compete. No matter whether it's a rules change, an aero change, a manufacturer change, maybe even a driver and a crew chief change, I say every year, give it a chance. I think a good rule of thumb is let's get through Daytona, Atlanta, and the three races on the West Coast, and then I think we kind of know where we're at. So please, pump the brakes. Don't judge this rules package after just two races. Let's give it a chance, and you know what? I think you may be pleasantly surprised what this 2019 rules package is going to give us.